If you follow CRISPR companies, you probably remember how Intelli's therapeutic share price almost doubled in a single day based on positive clinical data for their drug candidate. And now it's time for Editor's Medicine to release the first clinical data about the most advanced drug candidate, Edit 101. And I believe since they will be releasing these data just in a few days, it's a good time to refresh our memory and look at all available data, preclinical and all other data that, that was released by editors. And at the end of this video, I will disclose my position in editors. Let's dive in. Hello, my name is Marat, I'm a PhD student in medicinal chemistry and on this channel I'm talking about biotech stocks, CRISPR stocks and all stuff like this. If you're interested in this type of subject, you're welcome to subscribe and I just want to remind you that this is not financial advice and I'm just sharing my opinion as I would share it with my friends. If you look at the share price for Edison's medicine for the last half a year, you can see quite a lot of volatility. It was as low as like $30 and as high as 70 and this spike recent spike in june it was connected to good data from intelia and all crispr companies back then just jumped quite a bit and then you can see it was like brought down but then i don't remember like somewhere in the beginning of august editors released news that they will be publishing clinical data later in september and since beginning of August since they published this announcement you can see the share price kind of increased by 50% and during this period of time there were some other significant news but not as significant to cause 50% share price increase and I believe it's mostly connected to anticipation of good data based on previous experience with Intellia because everyone was like doubtful when Intellia released they first clinical data but now they gain more confidence because Intelia was like positive news and now people anticipate similar story for editors and I believe this is a primary reason why share price as high as it is right now but definitely if clinical data will be good share price could easily double as well from this point up to like 100-120 in today's video, most of the information will be based on information provided by editors in Q2 earnings call and I will leave link to a transcript in the description of this video. And also I will be referring to Luxterna, a registered drug that also treat LCA, same disease as Edit 101 is aiming to treat. But just because this disease has lots of different mutation that causing this disease, it's they not direct competitors to editors in short LCA is genetic disorder that is causing blindness and if you want to know more about the mechanism of action of edit 101 I will leave link in the description to Tommy from CRISPR talk channel if you check clinical trials page for edit 101 you can see that actual start date is September 26 2019 and they aiming to finish in 2024 an actual administration of the drug for the first patient happened in March of 2020 and then after this initial low dose cohort they progressed to a middle dose and patient with middle dose they start to be treated in first quarter of 2021 so for the first cohort in low dose we already have observation of a bit more than one year but for the middle dose it's only half a year or three months depending on the patient because like not all of them treated at the same time so I'm not expecting huge amount of data for middle cohort but for the low cohort this safety profile should be quite good and on this slide you can see they plan for clinical trials for edit 101 you can see that they started with adult low dose and this is just the concentration that they administer to a low dose patient then they progress to a middle dose which is approximately two times high as you can see according to numbers right now they will be publishing data for adult low dose and middle dose for these two concentrations but right now they already enrolling patient for adult high dose and pediatric middle dose which is very exciting and in my opinion it's really good sign because 
if it wasn't safe, FDA wouldn't be willing to allow them to proceed to the next step with high dose in adults or middle dose in pediatric group. So since they enroll in patients in these two groups right now, it's amazing to see what kind of results it's gonna show. Now to add a little bit more context to what I'm talking about and what to expect from EDIT 101 treatment, I want to talk about Luxterna, another treatment which is treating LCA, but LCA caused by different mutation because LCA can be caused by at least 17 different mutation in, in the eye. So, and here is this young guy, Jack Hogan, and I'll leave link to this article in the description, but I just want to highlight main points that when he was diagnosed, they, his parents, they were so worried that by the time of 20 or 30 years old, he will be completely blind because he started losing his vision in the young age and was no cure available at that time. And they were, of course, like really worried. And this is why for me, it's very exciting, you know, like to read all these new, new developments about CRISPR companies and gene therapy in general, that people who would otherwise lose their vision or suffer from other type of diseases, some of them deadly, can be cured now. So, and another point that I want to highlight here is that Jack was unable to see in the dark and had very little peripheral vision. Jack was not able to see the movies, couldn't see in the dark restaurants. Jack was unable to see in school on a whiteboard or what teacher may have been teaching. So basically he was already suffering quite big vision loss at this point when he was just like 14 or 15. Then Jack was treated with Luxterna and actually he was the first commercial patient to receive this drug. And this drug is not cheap. It's $420,000 per one eye. So it's more than $800 for treatment for a single person. So it's very costly, but the price will definitely go down as time goes by. And I just want to highlight you one more point that before surgery, Jack eyesight was 20 dash 120 but now it's 20 dash 80 and i'm not sure if you're familiar with this type of metrics because i had to google myself that actually like what he used to be able to see from 120 meters now he was able to see from 80 meters or maybe it fits because you know like this us system i live in australia we use meters always but the point is that his vision actually improved compared to how it was before the surgery. So it not just stopped vision loss, but also it improved vision, even though not to 100%, but to some extent. And then it says that since surgery, Jack has regained sight in the dark and he also has better peripheral vision. It's not perfect, it will never be perfect, but he can see and he's not getting worse. And for me, this is the main point because some people may be like, you know, just seen in the edit clinical trial that blind people don't start all of a sudden see everything and they will be disappointed. But here, look, based on this external experience, you can see that people are not getting from nearly blind to completely healthy. It's not working like this because this damage to eye is already done and it's hard to restore and the main point is just to stop the progression of this disease and even this is big achievement and people of course who would otherwise lose their vision they will be happy to take at least medicine that will stop this process and now i just want to show you a short clip with this guy jack hogan and see how he described what happened to him after surgery and how his vision was improved. My eyes didn't like just get better in one night. It was over time. It gradually got better. I wouldn't have met Dr. Pierce had it not been for the foundation. We had told him that as soon as it was FDA approved, we would be your first patient. And Jack was our his first patient. Various news articles tell the story of Jack receiving Luxterna and gaining eyesight. I don't have to hold on to my friend's shoulders anymore when I, when I go to a movie theater or go outside at night. It is a really 
rapidly evolving field. The success of recent treatments leading to the first FDA approved gene therapy and certainly in all of ophthalmology has led to a tremendous amount of enthusiasm and excitement and interest in the field. Jack shows us how he can play basketball in his backyard now. He makes a basket. The surgery is definitely successful. Jack can see a whole lot more. He can see in the dark. He has better peripheral vision. He's a lot more confident. And also, I wanted to show you one more clip about Lexterna and obstacle test that they were using in their clinical trials. And it's relevant because similar obstacle tests will be used definitely in editors' clinical trials. Maybe now, maybe they will use it later. But just to give you an idea what kind of test they perform and what to expect. Start. Redirect. Redirect. And stop. Now as you've seen this clip, imagine that the difference between these two clips is just one year. And the last point that I want to mention about Laxterna that Spark Therapeutics after development and getting approval for Laxterna was bought by Roche for 4.3 billion. And if you look at the market capitalization of editors, it's just about 4 billion right now and as a time of recording this video. So they have comparable market cap as companies that develop this single treatment but for me editors definitely deserved higher capitalization okay so now it's time to have a look at the q2 conference call and see what kind of question analysts were asking from editors and based on their answers we also can get some additional little bits of information on what to expect from clinical trials so this is what they said in the opening remarks. Data will include safety and evaluation of the measurements, biological activity from six adult patients that have been treated for the first two dose cohorts. And another point that I want to highlight from here is what kind of endpoints editors is looking for. And as you can see that they measure retinal response to light as well as clinically relevant outcomes such as reproducible improvement in patient reported visual acuity or inability to maneuver around objects at different level of illumination. And here is why I showed you this clip where a person was navigating the maze because basically it's same kind of test that editors will be performing during their clinical trials. So, and now let's have a look at the questions and I highlighted the most interesting questions here. First, from Barclay Capital, you can see that they're asking, will you also share mobility core score and then how should we look at this in context of natural history when you share this data? And answer by chief medical officer is actually kind of suggesting us that we probably shouldn't expect that much of a data because they again highlight that primary outcome for us is safety and those limiting toxicity. So they just getting ready to develop new programs. And also, of course, they want to spend enough time looking at safety profile first. And for this part where they're asking about mobility score, you can see that chief medical officer is telling that 
for being able to manure a maze, I want to remind everybody that it's still quite early in trial and longest patient in mid dose cohort was only dosed in January. And of course, you can't really determine much. Recovery is at least a couple of months. It's quite complicated and painful. Here is the next interesting question in my opinion, but I'm not going to read it because like you can see it's quite lengthy one and you can just pause and read it for yourself. But main summary for me here is that they will be looking at other non-direct parameters because they can't measure editing since it's in the eye and you can't just take some sample and see if you edited cells or not. And you have to look at some other data that will suggest if your protein that you're aiming to produce start getting produced and if any change in the eye happening that you expect to see. So this is why it's a little bit more tricky compared to let's say in teletherapeutics or CRISPR therapeutics where you can actually take sample of blood or sample of liver and your patient will be okay with this. And this question is very important in my opinion. You can see that they're asking for cohort 2. Are the patient enrolled also light perception only, like cohort 1, or are they able to perceive hand motion or better in cohort 2? People involved in cohort 1 very close to a complete blindness and they only see change in light. And you can read answer for yourself, but the main point is that they slowly progressing and recruiting people with better vision because they want to be extra safe. They don't want to damage somebody who can see now and like lose their vision because they want to make sure that it's safe, first of all, as any other drug. Because they're saying that in cohort 2, there are some patients that are already with better vision compared to just light perception. So might be we will be able to see one or two people in this second cohort who actually can react to treatment a little bit better. If it's just light perception, it's very hard to measure if editing is successful or not. So, and the last question that I want to bring to your attention from this conference call, talking about safety. And you can see that Edit 101 data coming in September. Can you talk more about whether or not we should expect to see clinical measurement fluctuate over the follow-up period or remaining relatively consistent? And basically the answer is that it's still early stages. And if you want, you can just pause and read it for yourself. But it's early stages and it's hard to tell about consistency because it's only been like three to five months for patients and in terms of safety everything is looking great so far and they don't see any signals to stop and this is why they were able to actually progress to adult high dose and pediatric mid dose cohorts because FDA gave them a green signal that there is no safety issues you can proceed as you plan. And for me this is very important because if they don't see any safety questions now most likely in the future no safety concerns will be as well because it's been already like more than a year since they inject first patient and so far no safety issues i'm happy with this just to summarize what i said in this video that first of all and this is important that there is no safety issues right now and all clinical trials proceed as normal as planned second that we shouldn't expect too much from this clinical data because first cohort, low dose cohort, were people who were almost blind and it's very hard to judge if their eyesight is improving or not. So I believe that the most benefit we will see in pediatric cohort. So we have to wait till clinical data for pediatric cohort will be released. And even the stop of loss of vision, it's amazing result. And based on the information that Luxterna was actually first gene therapy to be registered by FDA, I believe that Edit 101 has a great chance to get registration as well. And as I promised in the beginning, here is my position in Editor's Medicine. And since it's split between two brokers, here are two screenshots. And you have to take into account, even though my position is relatively small in this company, I am biased and this is why I might be 
over positive about this clinical data and I'm hoping that it's going to be good. But on the other side, I'm actually lowering expectation for myself based on what I just described to you in this video because I believe that the most exciting is still in the future in pediatric cohort. And of course, I want to be 100% transparent with you and mention some negative stuff about editors that you have to take into account if you want to buy stock of editors that actually some analysts were putting price target of $20 for their stock just like a couple of months ago, <laughs> meaning that it will go down by like 60-70% if they are right. And also that in recent times, like probably in less than two years, they changed two CEOs and as well that the chief scientific officer left company as well and they recently appointed new person for this role. So this is some kind of dodgy developments that are happening in editors and it's up to you at the end of the day to make your own call if you believe that this company is on track to make some great stuff or if it's a disaster and you have to look for other CRISPR companies. You have more choice than ever and you don't necessarily need to invest in editors. You have so many companies to choose from right now and more to come definitely in the following years. So if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. If anything is not clear, ask me in the comments and I promise that I'll try to be a bit more consistent with videos now I'm more settled and I'll try to upload a bit more frequent and I'll see you in the next one.